Hello and welcome to this episode of Friendly Finance in which we are going to focus on a margin purchase of securities. To keep it as simple as possible, a margin purchase is where a part of the purchase is financed by borrowed funds. To be more specific, my friends, if you have a margin account with your broker, you can request for a loan from the broker to partly fund your purchase. Naturally, the broker is going to keep the existing securities in your account as collateral against the loan. Um, it is also important to keep in mind that the securities that you buy on margin belong to the broker till the time you clear off your loan. And such securities are said to be held in street name by the broker. Let us also look at a few more terms that are related to margin trading. The first one is margin loan, which simply represents the amount that is borrowed from the broker. And since this signifies a loan, um, the interest on this loan is computed at 1 to 3 percent above the prime rate. This margin loan, my friends, also has an alternative name. This is also known as the debit balance. Now, since we have said that the interest on this loan is computed at uh, 1 to 3 percent above the prime rate, let us also define what is prime rate. Prime rate is simply the lowest interest that we charge from our preferred customers or the lowest interest charged from our best business borrowers. And then I am seeing the third item here which is margin account and if we want to define a margin account, it can neatly fit into this sentence that a margin account is a brokerage account for which margin trading is authorized. Now suppose you have decided to um, buy some stock by using a margin account, then you are going to run into a few margin requirements and the first one of them is going to be the initial margin. The initial margin my friends is the minimum percentage of cash that the investor must put up for a purchase. Let us understand this by taking up a few numbers. Suppose you want to buy 20 shares in XYZ Corporation and the going price is $100 per share. That my friends is going to give you a total purchase price of 20 times 100. That is uh, a sum of $2,000. Now let us also assume that the initial margin requirement is 40%. What it means is that 40% of the total purchase price is going to have to be contributed by you as the investor and the rest of the amount can be borrowed from the broker in the form of a margin loan. So let us write here what is going to be the amount of money put up by you. It is going to be 40% of the total purchase price. So let us write that here and 40% of 2000 is going to give you a sum of $800 that is the amount of your contribution towards the purchase and you can borrow the rest of the money from the broker which is known as the margin loan or the debit balance. Now uh, you are going to perhaps appreciate the fact that the market price of uh, shares keeps on fluctuating. It is not going to remain $100 per share forever. So if the price of the share goes on fluctuating then the initial margin uh, requirement of 40% is not going to be met with at all times because the actual margin is going to vary uh, depending upon what is the current price of the shares in the uh, market. So uh, what is done is the that the actual margin my friends on your account is computed on a daily basis and this activity is known as marking to the market. How the actual margin is computed is pretty simple. We are using this little equation here on the left hand side we have the letters AM that represents um, actual margin and on the right hand side we have this V minus D and the whole thing is divided by V where V is the value of securities and D is your margin loan or debit balance. Let us continue with the numbers that we have assumed before and now let us uh, uh, also assume that the price of the shares falls to $70 per share. In that case, your actual margin is going to be, let us first of all write a number for this V here. You have bought 20 shares. Now at the rate of $70 per share, the value of your securities is going to be $1,400. And from this, you are subtracting the amount of your loan, which is $1,200. And you're dividing then this whole thing by the value of the securities. And when you carry out this computation, you are going to find that the actual margin on your account is 
14.29% uh, only, uh, whereas the initial margin requirement is stipulated at 40%. Now things can get worse. Suppose the price of the share falls to $50 per share. You are going to realize that if that happens, the value of your securities is going to drop even further because you bought 20 shares. So that, that means at the price of $50 per share, um, the value of your securities is going to be 20 times 50, that is 1000. And from that, if you subtract the amount of your loan and then divide this whole thing by 1000, you are going to have a negative number here because in the numerator you have the difference between a thousand and um, 1200 so it gives you a negative number and the result here is going to be negative 20 percent so what you also observe here is that the value of the securities which act as a collateral against your loan is actually now below the value of the loan itself the loan is valued at um, 1200 dollars and the securities uh, which are held as collateral against this loan is uh, worth only $1,000 and that is going to make your broker pretty um, upset. So that this does not happen, we uh, usually, when I say we, I mean the exchange, the exchange usually stipulates a maintenance margin requirement, which is simply the percentage level at which the investor must keep his or her actual margin. So let us also build in an additional number for maintenance margin. Let us say it is equal to 20%. And now let us see if the stock price falls to $70 per share, what happens to the actual margin? I guess we have already computed that here. Uh, the actual margin is going to be 14.29%. So let us write that here quickly. Now what you are going to observe here is that this number 14.29% is below this maintenance margin requirement also. Maintenance margin requirement is 20% and actual margin is 14.29%. When that happens, my friends, your brokerage account is said to be under margined. And when the account is under margined, you are going to receive a margin call from your broker asking you to rectify the situation. And you can do that by either topping up your account by depositing more cash or securities in the account or you can simply pay off a part of your loan by either using up the cash in your account or if you don't have sufficient cash you can sell some securities in your account raise some money and you, and then use the money to settle off a part of the loan now if uh, the stock price fell to eighty dollars per share let us see what is going to be the actual margin you have bought 20 um, shares at the rate of $80 per share, the value of your securities is going to be 1600 from which you subtract the amount of your loan and then you divide the whole thing by the value of your securities that is 1600 and that my friends is going to give you an actual margin of 25% which if you observe now is above the maintenance margin requirement of 20% but it is still below the initial margin requirement of 40%. When that happens, that is when your actual margin is above the maintenance margin requirement but still below the initial margin requirement, your account status, uh, my friends, is restricted. Um, practically, this account is frozen in the sense that no activity takes place. Uh, you are neither going to receive a margin call and nor you are going to be allowed to withdraw anything from the account. Well, you can of course make a deposit to the account, nobody refuses that. Um, if now let us take up the last scenario, the stock price rather than um, instead of falling, if it um, rises to $120, then let us see what is going to be the value of your securities. You bought 20 shares and at the rate of $120 per share, the value of your securities is going to be $2,400. You subtract the amount of your loan, close the bracket, divide the whole thing by the value of your securities and this time it is going to give you an actual margin of 50% which you will realize is even above the initial margin requirement and in this case your account status is going to be unrestricted or over margined and this is the best possible situation which you can hope for as an investor because in this case you are going to have a choice to leave things as they are or if you so desire you can withdraw money from your account.